What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ayushi and today we're going to be talking about Cube World. Are you a new player? Did you just end up getting this game now that it's in beta but you don't know what's going on or why you're getting wrecked all the time? Well, that's what this video is for. All of you that ended up struggling just as hard as I did at the beginning of the game. Except arguably I had a lot more experience with the alpha version of the game, but there is going to end up being some quick tips that I can end up giving you if you're just starting out. So these are going to end up being res stations. You pretty much are going to get wrecked over and over and over again by fighting stronger enemies one of the first things you're going to want to do is start noticing these you can activate them at any time you can see them on the map pretty easily if you zoom in all the way they're going to end up being a little gray dot and kind of you'll get the hang of it as you end up going through the map it's a lot easier to see over here at the ocean see this uh this gray dot right here that's what it looks like fully zoomed in but even fully zoomed out uh, well zoomed out as i can get it's gonna look like this so you can end up actually seeing it in the different biomes you're just gonna end up getting a little bit better at it uh but one of the first things i would recommend that you do is press o go to your options and then you're going to end up changing uh where is it where is it rarity yeah so you're gonna change that to as stars rather than just color coded so as stars rarity on gear and dungeons and enemies and stuff like that is going to be color coded yes but it's also going to end up showing stars which makes things a lot easier like you can see these guys are green green is the second tier of difficulty that's why they are going to end up being two stars now that said if you are strong enough to handle two star enemies it doesn't mean that you'll be able to handle every two star enemy because this game is fundamentally broken with a lot of the different enemy types in the game some of them are going to have abilities that can one shot you while most of the wildlife creatures are going to be easy peasy the hardest enemies in the game are, are going to be the mages they just spam their attacks and they don't have any cooldown or anything like that they'll just absolutely decimate you but you can see that this bug over here is bigger than the other ones that means that he's a boss so he could end up being a lot stronger than the little side enemies sometimes you'll end up running into possessed enemies as well these are going to be enemies that'll have augmented health i don't know if they have augmented damage but usually they'll end up being a quest uh, somewhere in the biome that will end up relieving the possession so you can kind of keep that in mind if you ever end up finding a super difficult enemy maybe wait until you've removed that possession quest out of the way although it could end up being a way way later but at the least when you end up coming back to that possessed enemy it might end up being a lot easier for you right now it's also really really important what class you end up choosing just because you're in it for the long haul right unless you end up just restarting your character over and over because of the stupid region lock but we'll talk about that in a bit so as you're at the beginning of the game i'd recommend that you just focus on the one star enemies but keep this in mind folks you do not actually gain levels in this game no sir no ma'am it's all based on gear so there's not really much point in farming random side enemies that are one star outside of getting gold and then the only reason you want to fight them is because you're trying to make your way over to a city so you can see this one right here so uh let me actually show you an example of a new biome that i haven't been in so you can see right here see these little black dots i already know just because i've been playing this game so long that's what a village looks like so i would just middle click to end up marking it and there you go you just use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out right click drags the map left click turns and uh rotates the axis of it right so you're trying to look for the village, rush for it immediately. And along the way, you know, you're trying to look for any like fast travel points. Like I can see there's one right here and that's probably gonna be the closest fast travel point to the town because they don't generate with them inside. But you know, you kind of just, you'll end up getting the hang of it as you go along. And then there's going to end up being certain points of interest. Like I can tell there's obviously gonna be something over here because of all these weird mountains and stuff. Maybe not, uh, not always, but here's a little graveyard. So I, you know, I already know that quest, so on and so forth. As you end up talking to various NPCs that you'll find and the way that you tell if a creature is hostile or not, if it has a red health bar, it's evil. If it has a green health bar, usually that means that it's just a wildlife creature. And if it has a blue health bar, like our little buddy right here, that means that it's going to be an NPC that you can talk to or that you can rely on. Because in a lot of ways, uh, you can end up finding some NPCs out in the world that'll just be traveling, lure a bunch of enemies to them, and then they'll end up taking the aggro. 
That said, if you're luring super strong enemies to them, they could end up getting wrecked right away. Now, mounts and stuff like that, we'll talk about that in a bit because that's a little bit more uh, further down the line. You know, taming the creatures is also a little bit more complicated as well, but you can always press F1 to end up seeing your class abilities. So that's actually covered by my face cam right now. Uh, but you can see our left click is going to end up being our basic attack. And each of the classes is going to end up having three different weapon types, which are basically going to vary between uh, slow attack speed, high damage, somewhere along the middle, and then, uh, or somewhere along, uh, you know, more attack speed, but less damage. And then another one that usually is going to end up being more defensive. And, and despite the fact that I'm rocking all of this God gear, you can see what is actually happening. Why am I dying to this one star enemy? That's that region lock. But we'll, again, we'll talk about that in a bit. So I, I do want to mention that there is going to end up being a stamina bar that only shows up uh, during context situations. So you can middle mouse while you're pressing a direction and that's going to give you an invulnerability roll similar to Dark Souls. You can use this very strategically to end up blocking uh, enemy attacks and stuff like that and depending on the character that you are like the warrior you know i kind of got this overhead swing sometimes you'll end up having uh his hands go in front of them or a shield and you can use that for a blocking attack uh, and honestly it kind of sucks that this game doesn't really explain your abilities i don't know most of the era characters and even though i've put in like such an enormous amount of time with the warrior i still don't know how most of his abilities work just because there's no tool tips for any of this stuff unfortunately uh, but if you're not moving and you press the middle mouse usually that's going to end up being some type of a dodge or attack that just lunges you into battle with this guy or like with the archer it's going to end up making you do a big backflip that you can actually use very strategically to climb up the environment because you can always run up to anything and then press e and you'll start climbing it now I'm not actually draining stamina right now because I've already found the climb boots in this biome, but normally you would end up draining stamina. There is a trick that you can end up doing though, where you literally just spam E and space over and over and you can just climb up anything, so long as it's a flat wall, but that's going to end up avoiding you losing all of your stamina or anything. Well, arguably you'll still lose your stamina, but you'll be able to climb anything anyways. Now, as far as taming creatures are concerned, that's kind of weird and doesn't explain it at all. As you're uh, game ending random uh, creatures in the environment, they'll have a chance of dropping pet food. So you press B to open your inventory and you can see all your gear right here, as well as different categories based on the region, which again, we'll get into that in a bit. You can see your key items, your potions and junk. Uh, this is going to end up being your materials for like, uh, you know, your gear upgrades and stuff. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. And then there's gonna be your pets tab. So your pets tab uh, is going to end up like sometimes you'll randomly find food either from enemies in the environment or you can buy them in the item shop signified by a bag we'll go to the uh shop in, in a minute here uh but these different foods you can only carry one at a time uh, you will consume it as you tame whatever creature they correspond to and then you could get another uh, piece of the same food So each of the creatures in the game is going to end up having a specific food that they respond to a lot of them Aren't actually on the cube world wiki right now because that's slowly being updated But that's your best bet for where you're going to end up seeing a lot of the food end up working It's just go to the cube world wiki and check it out, right? Uh, so another thing too is over by this crown dude over here, uh, I do want to mention passively too that sometimes you can end up coming into a town and everyone's going to be petrified. That means that somewhere on the biome, there's going to end up being a witch's hut. So you can see my witch's hut was actually way over here. And as you end up destroying the witch, usually it'll be a one star, but once you get that done, it's going to end up having the town unpetrified so that you can actually trade with the NPCs and stuff like that. Usually there's more than one town per biome though. So if one's petrified, I would honestly recommend that you just keep on walking and grab gathering fast roll points and points of interest along the way while you end up going from one town to another because you're going to need to interact with these NPCs. Now, depending on what your character is, you can actually talk to this guy to change your special move. So your ultimate ability in my case uh, is going to end up being a rock fist, which is great for traveling. It also does a ton of damage and knocks most enemies down on the ground on their butts. But at the beginning of the game, the Guardian is going to end up being really good for you if you're a warrior, for example, because while it's supposed to end up increasing your health percentage, it doesn't actually scale based on the gear. There, there's some type of bug with it, I don't know. Uh, but when you use this alt, Heroic Shout, you're actually going to give yourself a health regen. And that's pretty much the only health regen in the entire game. 
outside of the warrior actually does have life steal that can trigger here and there that said i like using the rock one and the berserker specialization uh just because it gives me a lot more uh you know distance to travel because as you go into doom biomes and stuff you're not going to be able to carry over any of your traveling items and stuff like that so you can see all the hustle bustle of the town talk to the npcs they'll end up giving you various quests but some of them you'll just have to find out on your own if you ever end up finding leftovers as an item you're actually going to find this dude over here here. he's the identifier so for a fee you can actually identify the items in this guy's inventory uh, and then you're going to end up getting the items just out of it and it's gonna cost you a fee but it's not really that big of a deal honestly speaking usually it's pretty cheap um, and then there's going to end up being the armor shop the weapon shop the inn, the little bag icon that you can see in the top right that's going to end up being that item shop that i mentioned and in order to end up getting potions in this game it's a bit difficult and honestly you're not really going to need them that much because you'll get destroyed by absolutely everything because this game's like really crazy with its balance but let's just say for example you need a pot so you'll buy a glass flask then you'll go into the water and press c and then in the water you can end up crafting uh somewhere somewhere in one of these inventories it's like a bottle of water right uh and then through crafting oh water flask there it is so you have to craft this while you're in water and then you have to find heart flowers just out in the environment just press e on everything to pick them up that's your interact button and then you can combine those items into making a life potion yeah then there's gonna be these other potions uh most notably is going to end up being where is it where is it oh it's in the food items okay so lemonade for example you can use this to prevent yourself from taking damage from lava which is important because most biomes will actually generate with a point of interest that's lava so over here i haven't even gotten this spirit bell just because it's in the middle of a lava lake and i can't make lemonade because i don't have ice i am assuming that you get ice from the ice biome of which i have not traveled to yet then there's going to be this flying guy this guy is going to be very important if you're playing uh, with your friends because not only will he, for a fee, uh, just travel you to other parts of the map, which is, you know, it's kind of nice, but it's really, really expensive, especially when you're just starting out. Even for somebody like myself, it's still a little bit expensive. I only ever use this guy once or twice because any of the respawn stations is going to end up being a fast travel point anyway, so it doesn't matter. However, if you're trying to play this game with your friends, basically you're gonna press J, invite your friends through Steam, uh, well, you'll just see a little invite icon and then they'll have to press J and click join. And then suddenly just boop, they're just going to show up on your map. Your game just decides, oh, now you're online. And the thing is, that's really cool about this game is even though this map seems to be random generated, it is and it isn't. It seems like it's random generated, but at the same time already set. So your friend is going to generate the exact same map that you are, but they'll probably be like 10 billion kilometers or miles away, right? So the difference being that you're going to have to use the flight master in order to end up fast traveling over to your friends. But when you click on your friend's icon, he'll let you do it for free. Now, if you're super duper invested in a biome or you're just about to go into another biome, then maybe you'll want to end up finishing the biome that you're in before you end up joining your friends. But for the most part, if you're moving on to another biome, you can just join your friends. I'd recommend that if you have a whole bunch of people that you're going to be playing this game with, get everybody to fast travel to just one person so that you guys can just spread apart and just kind of do your own thing in your single player world. But then at any point, you can just hop online and then you're right beside each other rather than having to take the eagle. Because when you take the eagle, like let's say I zoom all the way out and I go like way over here, right? If I'm fast traveling to someone, it would actually be much, much further. But you can see there is no possible way that I would ever be able to find the biomes that I already had my time invested in. The icon that you're seeing right now is because my player is actually still in this location. But if I was over here, then you would never be able to tell that this biome ever existed. I wish that there was a way that you could fast travel back to them, but then it would end up costing, right? anyways that's why i would say try to end up joining with your friends have everybody all join up at once and if you're swapping over to another biome then you can just join your friend right away because this game has a gross progression system if you can even call it that where as soon as you end up going into the next biome all of your gear resets so you can see right now i can actually use this mount right so in order to use a mount you have to find the reins 
and that is a random quest that you can find out in the world or not it might not end up being there either you'll end up finding it by complete random like i did uh or maybe an npc will end up telling you about the quest but the point is that not every biome is going to generate with every different item. So there's going to be the hang glider. There's going to be the boat. There's going to be the climbing gauntlets that give you infinite stamina while you're climbing. All of these items and your gear will end up cycling to zero as soon as you end up crossing this invisible border right here. It's disgusting. Even right now, the gear that I'm rocking, it says that it's zero stars. It says that it's garbage. And that's why I was getting my butt kicked by a one star enemy. But in another biome, this is actually the strongest gear in the game. This is legendary, son. This is yellow gear. Now, that is disgusting, yes. But there is also going to end up being gear with a plus icon beside it. Now, gear with a plus icon beside it is going to work in the next biome, but I don't know how many biomes it works in before it just doesn't anymore. It's kind of like... Uh, it works in like three or four biomes away from the one that you ended up finding it in or something to that effect And then it'll just suddenly stop working again So if you're thinking that you can get plus gear and then just keep that forever No, there is no permanent permanent gear in the game Unfortunately now as far as the quest themselves now we can actually dive into this section of the game uh, I want to just make sure that I didn't end up missing anything with all the yeah Okay, so all the gear I was talking about and then there's going to end up being the crafting system with crafting gear But we'll talk about that in a bit your pets will stay from biome to biome But rather whether you're going to be able to ride them or not is not going to stay uh, Your gold is going to end up staying and the relic items are going to stay That's going to be how you actually level up your character because there's not leveling off of enemies There is leveling only with grabbing relics now we'll talk about those in a bit because these are pretty much the big thing about this game. This is what you're going for or what the dev wants you to be going for, but arguably is just lame. So as you end up going through the game, you're going to end up getting all these different tiers of quests. One star, two star, three star, more, five star, six star, seven star, whatever. Actually, it only goes up to five star. I was just rhyming. But the quests are going to end up varying and you're honestly not going to end up seeing too, too much in terms of the different quests. So there's going to be your fast travel points that you'll be able to see very easily on the map. But then there's also going to end up being stuff like this that you'll see on the map that looks like a fast travel point, but turns out that it's lore. So when you end up reading the lore items, I I'm not sure how much lore you need, but eventually, once you've gathered enough lore, it's just going to automatically unlock another relic on your map and show you where it is. You could otherwise find this relic organically, but the fact is it's going to end up showing it on your map, which would end up being kind of nice if you didn't have to go through the entire biome all over again in order to end up getting to the relic in the first place because relics are going to end up being in these huge massive dungeons that are going to end up being super duper difficult but a lot of fun they're definitely the highlight of the game because the combat's the highlight of the game even though 90 percent of this game i would say is just walking from one travel point to another because unfortunately the fast travel points for my liking are not close enough like i wish that a fast travel point generated inside every town instead i have to spawn at this one or this one and then walk to town that's disgusting now you can see certain items on the map won't actually show up on the map until you've interacted with them so this right here is going to end up being uh you can see the little four prongs right there that means that it's a floating island which arguably these are very difficult to end up seeing on the map that's where you need to end up finding the flute item so the flute item is going to end up being the same as the loot or the harp i guess i should say where it'll usually just be found like randomly inside some ruins or something or maybe on top of a mountain what have you who knows uh you just end up finding these items and the harp is going to be used on uh, if you ever end up finding a little it's going to end up being a small little room or a tower or a block fort thing and it's going to end up having a doorway that's pretty much made out of solid gold you'll know it when you see it it's going to end up being really shiny you need the harp in order to open that. A lot of uh, relics will actually be locked behind doors like that. So usually you'll have to have the harp in order to end up getting some of the relics, meaning that you have to get the harp in the biome, which obviously stunts your progress if you just ended up rushing all of the gear, but don't end up having that item. And then opposite of that, there's going to end up being floating islands that you'll see. And that's where you'll end up using the flute on those. Actually, I think I can kind of see this one in the distance. Yeah, you see it up over there, right? So those aren't going to show up on the map. 
uh, and even once you've uh, actually like found them you're not going to see them on the map so you'll definitely have to mark them like just with the middle mouse click when you have your map open and then just go back there later right unfortunately there's not multiple markers for uh, multiple uh, different locations on the map it's all just going to be a star but basically you'll go over there you'll find a little thing that you can interact with you press e on it just stand there and wait some birds will carry you up top and usually there's going to end up being gold or gear or something like that sometimes very rarely you can end up finding this little uh, fire treasure guy that i have and what he's gonna actually do is point you towards loot so he'll point you towards floating islands and stuff like that so long as there's loot on them uh, and then he'll also just point you towards random loot in the environment because sometimes there will just be some hidden stuff like up on this mountain over here that i would have never bothered to explore there was actually a purple ring on top of it that was really really good for me at the beginning of the game uh, and then somebody else mentioned how they got a legendary item on, in a underwater cave but of course diving underwater you can end up drowning and stuff like that but anyways let's get back to the main focus at hand which is the different quest types so the sword icon on a quest means that it's just for loot so these will end up resetting every time you end up sleeping at an inn because there is nighttime in this game, but you can only sleep at an inn at 1800 hours. So every time you end up sleeping at an inn, some of the quests will reset, some of them won't. Most notably is going to end up being all the sword ones. And then you can see right here, this was climbing claws as well as just a lore right beside it. This was my uh, hang glider just hanging out over there. Uh, and you know, you can just end up finding those from quest NPCs. This was my flute that I ended up finding just randomly on the ground. And over here, I ended up going to a crypt that ended up having this little fire guy in it that ended up giving me, you know, he searches out treasure for me, right? But what you're going to mostly want to focus on is the gnomes. So as you end up rescuing gnomes, for every tier, they're going to end up unlocking different gear inside the shops. The shops are going to cycle their gear over every time you end up using the inn as well. So it does pay to revisit them. But as we end up saving this first guy, you're going to go up to green gear, which is two star. So more than likely you go back and buy it whatever uh, and then you go to the green tier two star uh, gnome uh, and then the three star gnome is going to be the blue one and then finally the four star gnome is going to end up being the purple one and once he's been saved which argue you know it's going to end up being four star enemies so you gotta be really tanky and really strong for that but once he's saved the gear in the shops will actually go not only to four star but also to five star it's also going to end up bumping up to legendary now these hammer icons right here on the other hand are going to be the exact same thing but for different crafting tiers so you'll slowly end up unlocking all the way up to legendary and sometimes you can end up finding a plus item in here of course that's going to end up being very useful for you because you'll be able to use it in multiple biomes but you can see it's extremely expensive to end up crafting any legendary items all of the armor alone is like an insanely expensive crafting price in order to end up doing it and we'll talk about the crafting in a moment and just the anvil and forging up your gear and stuff like that but i would argue that crafted gear should be permanent especially considering how expensive it is to get a full set i think that that would be a really good form of progression just because if you're going to be resetting your gear all the time at the least i could be working towards getting the resources to get permanent gear but the fact that it only works for a couple different biomes is just kind of lame i mean there are mods that you can use uh, that i use that end up cycling your gear over into the next biome but i mean if you want to play the authentic experience this is what it is okay so uh, ultimately there's going to be another uh, key item which is the uh, bell you can use that to go through certain barred doors that are going to end up being a little bit shiny basically if you end up coming to a barred door that you can't open just by pressing e on it then usually that's where you're going to end up needing the bell so sometimes you'll end up even finding in the relic dungeon there might be some barred doors that you can't pass through because you have to use the spirit bell which makes you transparent so you can pass through it grab the item and then you end up leaving that's pretty much it so uh the other quests are going to end up being uh, the old hut we already talked about so there's gonna end up being these towers this purple icon right here uh pretty much means that when you end up defeating that enemy oh what does it do it like I don't I forget what it does it does something that ends up helping the entire biome but ultimately you're going to end up getting some gems out of it 
I'm sorry that it escaped my mind right now. I did this quest like way later on when I was doing this uh, biome and it's, I don't know, it didn't really affect the gameplay that much for me. Uh, by saving the mana pump, which is going to usually be very difficult because you're going to have four different bosses on each of the different parts of it, whatever you'll see for yourselves. Once you end up freeing the mana pump, you'll generate your MP faster in combat. As far as I know, it's, you know, it doesn't really give you the best description because your MP is going to start at zero until you start tagging enemies. Then it's going to generate unless you're playing as the rogue or assassin character, in which case while you're sneaking or stealth, you're going to actually generate more MP. But I'm playing as a warrior, so I just literally build it up from fighting. And then uh, the portal over here, which isn't always going to end up being five star. This is what is going to end up removing possession from random enemies out in the environment. As I mentioned earlier, the circle of power, if you're strong enough to defeat this guy, I mean, I unfortunately had him generate with five star and this guy was just the strongest thing in the entire biome that I could have ever faced. But the circle of power is just going to end up making you stronger in the entire biome. And I, I would argue, you know, that the circle of power should be something that's permanent as well, because then at least you would end up gaining some extra stats that you could carry over into the next biome, even if your stats end up resetting because of the gear. And then there's the relics. The relics suck because you'll literally spend like if you're doing this solo, it took me maybe five six hours to get through this one biome and it was an awesome time it was a blast okay completing quests upgrading my gear slowly taking on the harder dungeons and stuff like that it was an awesome time but once it was all said and done i ended up getting this relic that increased my swimming speed and then i was going into the next biome and then none of my gear meant anything so i basically just spent five hours just to get myself two percent more swimming speed which is irrelevant if you have a boat, but if you end up having a boat in this biome and then traveling into this biome, it's just going to randomly kick you off your boat and then you're going to have to find the boat in this biome. There's a lot of progressive items that should not be removed from your inventory, so hopefully this stuff gets ironed out, but thankfully the modding community is already taking care of it for any of you that actually want to play, you know, a normal video game instead of having your stuff get reset all the time. Because the experience that you have in one singular biome is great. The problem is that the game is fundamentally flawed as soon as you end up trying to progress into the other biomes because the entire game uh, is all about these relics that end up increasing your movement stats with items that get removed as soon as you end up going into the next biome, thus making them useless unless you get lucky enough to find them in the first place. Now, while I got 2% to my uh, swimming speed, Certain other stats, like uh, I've heard that with your gliding speed, if you end up getting a relic, I've heard it gives you a 10% buff. So they do end up varying in the different stats that they end up giving as far as the relics are concerned. But it kind of sucks that your stats aren't actually changing. And I've heard that somebody is working on a mod that is going to re-add levels to the game. Because in the alpha version of this game, there was actually a level system. And you would actually get stronger while leveling up on top of having gear. And I think that would be awesome if you could level up in this game, even even if your gear would reset, then at least you would slowly start to progress through the areas faster and faster and faster, and fighting enemies would serve more of a purpose other than just getting gold, right? Now, as you go through a single uh, biome, you're not going to end up seeing absolutely everything. There will be like a couple different key items that might not generate. Uh, there might be a couple dungeons that you'll see in a different biome that you didn't see in this one. And some biomes will just outright end up generating with multiple relics. I've heard people actually generate ocean biomes that have like, I don't know, it's like five different relics or something like that because the ocean biomes arguably are the most boring, but they're going to end up being the easiest biome that you can tackle just because you can see everything right here, you know, outside of some stuff that might generate underwater, but that's not really very likely. So I think that pretty much covers the basics of the game itself. Now we'll just talk about the crafting before we end up moving on. So depending on your character, you're either going to be needing to use wood or iron. So for warrior characters and stuff like that, you're going to end up going to the furnace uh, and you're going to end up forging your iron in this furnace. Now, where do you end up finding iron, you may ask? Well, while you're out in the world, there's going to be unmarked caves that you'll go in. Sometimes they won't generate anything. Sometimes they'll generate little rocks that you can attack that'll end up giving you iron. There's lots of things in the environment that you can end up attacking like bush 
fuchsias and cotton plants and stuff like that. You go and attack those so that you can gather these resources that are going to end up being used for the various crafting components, right? But you're going to end up needing a lot of iron. You're going to end up needing a lot of gold and stuff like that. Wood is going to be related to like the uh, bow character and the mage, I think. Uh, while iron is going to be for the rogue and the warrior and then you can always go over to the anvil and this is one of the coolest moments of this entire game even back in the alpha days i thought this was absolutely brilliant where you can uh literally oh okay this is the anvils for crafting sorry i mixed it up with this customization station so this you're going to be able to right click to rotate the item and you literally just click on the iron cube and you can start adding blocks to it that's awesome because that block not only is actually going to end up giving me a little bit of extra stats with this weapon it's physically on the object right now so you can completely customize the items and everybody's going to be able to see them there is a limited amount you can see i can upgrade one out of 32 uh, and there used to actually be uh spell like gem blocks or something that would end up giving it elemental damage but that was removed from the game as well unfortunately so it kind of took away the customization, which sucks because the customization, like this is something that no other games have, dude. Like I haven't seen anything that had something like this where you could just customize it within the game and then other players would be able to see it. I think that's great. And then again, last but not least, you come to the anvil in order to actually forge this gear, even though you can press C at any time to look at it. Is that because I'm near the anvil? Yeah. So it requires anvil when I press C. If I go close enough to it, uh, it now it's going to end up working right uh and then there's going to end up being the wood shop this should be the last thing that we have to talk about if i'm not mistaken hopefully i covered everything in today's video for you guys but over here is going to end up being where you'll end up chopping up your pieces of wood so you'll end up getting uh these logs just from random tree branches and stuff like that you forge them into a wood cube this table right over here is uh, going to end up being for crafting wooden items so more than likely if you're a mage and you're trying to craft a staff that's made out of wood etc etc uh usually i thought there was the same customization table maybe i can't use it because i don't have like a wooden item maybe that's what this is I don't know there there is a uh there is a table that you can interact with where you can kind of customize your bows and uh stabs as well or at least there was in the alpha version i haven't mained a uh, mage or a bow character i would just naturally assume you can customize their weapons as well uh just by throwing more blocks of wood on it and then it would end up doing the exact same thing where it makes it slightly stronger and hopefully that's everything I really, really hope that that's it. There's always going to be this art, uh, artifact tab so you can end up seeing all of the different relics and stuff like that, right? And I got quite a few. Not really that much to make much of a difference, though. But anyways, thanks for watching, folks. Very much appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Again, there are mods to kind of alleviate this disgusting system of restarting from the beginning. It's kind of fun restarting maybe once or twice, especially if you're doing it solo and then you restart in the next biome with your friends or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe you want to restart when you end up getting to a completely different biome, but ultimately this is just going to end up looking different and still playing the exact same. The only difference is that in this ice biome, it might be a lot easier to end up detecting uh, or seeing things on the map. Like we can plainly see that this is a village. There's a point of interest here or so on and so forth. There's some lava and so forth. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, again, there's mods that will make it so like there's a mod right now that I am already using that will automatically change the id number of your gear when you move to a new biome uh, but i'll have another video talking about that specifically when the dude ends up officially releasing the mod otherwise he just has it out for testing right now and then there was another guy that was talking about reverse engineering i don't necessarily want to call it reverse engineering because it's not that complicated uh but leveling is still in the game's code and someone is modding it so that levels are going to end up being back in the game which i think would be absolutely awesome because again it would actually give you incentive and would add a form of progression because as of right now i would not say that this is much of a progression system because the entirety of the game is centered around these relics that end up giving you movement speed for items that you may or may not have in your next biome because it's taken away hopefully a lot of this stuff ends up getting ironed out but who knows thanks for watching though folks hopefully you found this video helpful i really hope that i covered everything and didn't forget like some big thing but i think that's everything uh you know to an insane degree honestly speaking now you should know everything that there is about cube world 
And then if there is anything that I ended up missing, you guys can ask in the comments and I'm sure somebody will end up responding. Thanks for watching. Smash like, sub for more. Have yourselves a great day. Sign aura, and stay epic gamers.